All right, what's up, guys? So, Laugh Factory. Man, there was a day where I was just binge-watching a bunch of videos from them. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of uh, stand-up comedy stuff, so if y'all are a fan of stand-up comedy, then this this is the channel for you. I, I, I'm a fan of stand-up comedy. In fact, there might just be a day. I'm just saying, be just on the lookout for that video when it happens. But I definitely, at some point in time in my life, I want to do a stand-up comedy show. Like, honestly, can't really do it right now. I wish I would have did it before the pandemic. I really wish I did. Um, but, you know, definitely um, when the pandemic and everything is over with, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into some clubs. And I say I went too many times. Now I feel like I'm going to get all nervous and things, get up on stage, get the sweating and stuff. Like, I'm telling you, man, but I, I really do think I have what it takes to do some stand-up comedy. Like, I would love to do that. Like, just imagine that. Like, I went from doing, like, reaction videos to just, like, touring across the world. Like, I'm like the next Kevin Hart or something. I'm like, I mean, I look I look up to the man. I, You know, I gotta, you know, I gotta, like, follow in the, like, somewhat in the same footsteps and things. Like, just, you know, do what he's doing, but just change the jokes. But... Anyways, um, who knows if I mean, yo, that'd be dope. Laugh Factory call, um, contacted me and was just all like, "We'd like to work with you." I'm like, "Bruh, wait a second now." Like, hold on, this wasn't supposed to happen, but <laughs> no, nah, let's go ahead and get to this bit. Oh, this is try not to laugh. Okay, so no laughing, no laughing at all. So try, and they looked like the first comedian that they had was Tony Baker. So man, yep. That just Tony Baker. He's he's had me in tears at some point in time. So I'm like, I, that's cheating, bro. That's really cheating. But anyways, try not to laugh. Back to school, laugh factory, stand up comedy. Make sure you guys go subscribe to him. Let's get him to two million. But uh, yeah, let's get into this video. I grew up in Chicago, uh, public school kid. Did y'all go to public school? Public school crap? Yeah. <laughs> They didn't care about us in public school. They gave us chocolate milk with every lunch in public school. I know. They wanted us to get diabetes in public school. <laughs> and the thing about chocolate milk, it's great, but it doesn't, it doesn't match any meal you can think of. Mm. Like we were eating chocolate milk and spaghetti. That doesn't match. <laughs> chocolate milk and tater tots? Come on, public school. Yeah. You can't I'm even wash your food down that. with chocolate milk. That's thicker than what you just ate. I was over here having like, dang, and it's like, I think about it like cheese pizza and chocolate milk. Like if I tried that today, I probably would pass out and be like this. How was I eating this? Like I was eating this every day. Like what? And I'm like, I, I don't know how I manage. They do something to the food. I swear like that food is like edible poison. Your whole meal is sitting in your neck after, after lunch. Teachers That's are asking you questions. What was that, Anthony? <laughs> now we're cooking with grease. All right, man. I can get through this. I can. Remember, remember in school when they would hand out the worksheets to you, and the teacher would lick their thumb to get better traction on the page. I hated that, cause I would always get the freshly licked page. It was like she would re up done. on the lick every time she got to my desk. What you got is to do these worksheets, and when you're done, turn them in. I'm like, ah, got Miss Young's lick on my page. I always touch like that. I touch all three corners before I touch that last corner. Like, yeah, because there be a teacher that uh, got to do all of that. And then just like, you know, like swipe their whole thumb across the paper. And I just like, I'm sitting there in class, like using my shirt and things to grab it. And I'm all like, here, take it. I'm like, I don't, I don't want that oh, slobber paper. Get it, man. Get some hand sanitizer and, you yeah, know, you scrape ever, it. Uh, get you a new outfit, some new sneakers or something, and you just go to the pencil sharpener five, six times. <laughs> you ever take the unnecessary trip to the pencil sharpener because you got some new Nikes? I used to do that, but I had pro wings, the Payless shoes, and I was like, yeah, y'all feeling these? Y'all feeling these? My pencil would go all the way there. It was just an eraser and a lid. That was it. I am a teacher. Uh, give it up for that. Yeah, and... Um, give it up for getting fucked up over the summers. Um, I really, like, every teacher starts off really hopeful. I don't know if you guys know this or if you know teachers. Every teacher, like, in September, is like, Tasha, you can be anything you want to be. Around June, we're like, bitch, get the fuck out of class. You ain't gonna be shit. You ain't gonna be shit. A dentist and a lawyer, bitch, it ain't happening. Get the fuck out. Dang. No support. At the end of the year, all my students got those fucking fidget spinners and shit. 
Oh, yeah, that was... And I was trying to teach him fractions one day, but I had 24... Everybody, kids. yeah, that's... That's like some. It's like I forget about it until I hear somebody mention it. Cause I was like, "How many fidget spinners?" I was cleaning my room and found three of them. And I was like, "One of them I don't remember buying." I was just like, "When did I get this?" I'm like, "Bro, I'm like, that's that ain't normal." I'm like, "That fidget, they, it was bound like to like each like one person across the United States of America, maybe across the whole world." Um, yeah, they were bound to get like you were bound to get one fidget spinner, whether you bought it or it just magically appeared in your room. It's in my class, and they all had these fucking fidget spinners that are supposed to make them pay attention, right? But they're all like this, like whatever, right? And I was trying to teach them fractions and shit, and they wouldn't listen. So I took eight kids' fidget spinners and I threw them in the garbage, and they're like, uh-huh. I was like, now what? fucking fraction of fidget spinners are in the trash. <laughs> One third, yeah. Okay, you bitches, yeah, you got that lesson. I can't help my son with anything. You know, he, this, this last week before school ended, I'm trying to do math homework with him. Sixth grade, math homework. And I'm like, bro, we got this. It was a word problem. I'm like, dude, we got this, man. We sat down at the kitchen table, pencils sharpened. Let's do this. And I'm like, boom. And I realized I don't got this. I'm telling y'all right now, the day I got, I have kids, because I'm like, I'm going to try to figure out, like, what level of math that they're in. Like, if they're in, like, the advanced math, like, if they're in, like, one of the math classes where you, there's, like, only, like, two, three kids that are in there because they're the only smart kids in the whole school. I'm like, yeah, um, if they come to me and they be like, you know, dad, what's the, uh, like, you know, I need help with this. I'm like, we looking these answers up. I'm not going to try to sit here and stress myself out um, trying to figure out the answer. I'm like, no, nah, we looking all these answers up. So we're going to uh, go with we, yeah, we cheating overall. Like, we just going to have to cheat. I'm like, you, if you want to learn things the hard way, you very well can do that and figure it out yourself. But you think they'd be teaching you that in school rather than having you bringing it home. And, you know, I, I guess that's why they call it homework and stuff. But still, I'm like, nah, you bring any stuff here and it's too much for me. We cheating. So... <laughs> He's like, Dad, you gotta help me. I'm like, all right. And the word problem was insane. This, I'm not making this up. This was the word problem. It was, it was Peggy and Pam went to lunch. And the bill comes, and Pam only has $8. But Peggy says, don't worry about it. I've got two-fifths of the bill. What? Did you hear what Peggy said? <laughs> don't worry about it. I got two-fifths of that. How much is the bill? What the fuck is that? I know, like, who you even know talks I'm... like that? Nobody talks. I would look at them and be like, so how much money do you have? Nobody don't talk like that. I'm like, you, I'm, that, that'd be the last time I would hang out with Peggy. This room's ever said two-fifths to anything. Exactly. Exactly. No one's ever said, hey, man, want to get a round of beers? Yeah, man, I'll take the next two-fifths of the round. I got that. <laughs> no one says that. Yeah. Want to get an ounce of wheat? Nah, two-fifths for me, please. Want to do an eight ball of coke after the show? No, I'll take two fifths right here. A little two. I'm the two fifths guy. That's who I am. No one ever says that. My son was like, "You're scaring me. I need something to write down." I go, "Write Peggy's rude. Write that. Write Peggy's rude. No one likes Peggy. Write, write Peggy's yeah. gonna live and die with a lot of cats. Write that down." Dang. You know what, right, right, no one likes Peggy. Right, right, I hate Peggy. Write that in there. I hate Peggy. When your teacher asks you, right, you wrote that down, tell her you only did two-fifths of the problem. Some teachers are really good, and some teachers are really bad. Some teachers just did it for the benefits in the summers. You know what I mean? They don't know shit. That's My best true. friend is a teacher. He teaches Spanish. He knows no Spanish. No <laughs> Spanish. I said, how did you get that job? He said, they was hiring. I went in there and I said, buenos dias. They gave me the job. <laughs> he knows no Spanish. He knows no, how do you teach a class Spanish if you know no Spanish? I said to him one day, you know, just to test him. I said, well, you know, un poquito, just to see what he was gonna say. And he was like, yeah. I said, you don't even know what un poquito means? That's, that's a little bit. That just means everybody knows, every, if you don't know Spanish, everybody should at least know that. Even, even just, just as like, that's just in your, your handbook of shit you should know. You should know merci beaucoup. Don't know that, didn't know the first Adios, one. Adios, buenos dias, you should know un oh, poquito. Yeah. You should know that. Just in case, fellas, maybe y'all might get lucky one day and have sex with a Spanish woman. 
But if you do that, that on Paquito come in handy because they like to go rough. <laughs> I've been there. They go fast and they go rough. And, Hi, Bobby. Hey, you like, how you feeling? You like it? You be like, oh, do you want me to slow down? Uh, Paquito on Paquito, <laughs> bitch. Wow. Just slow it down. <laughs> I'm not in a rush. So I uh, just recently left a day job. I'm a former teacher, uh, 12 years in the city, one of those hot teachers. And I'll tell you, <laughs> worked for a small program called A Couple Kids Left Behind. Wow. <laughs> Some great work with the Big hey, Brothers, kind of Big Mothers program. And I'll tell you, <laughs> you gotta talk to these parents about bad news. You gotta open up with some good news. Before you get to the meat of the sandwich, the bad news, make sure you say something nice at the end called a good news sandwich. I'm like, your son, he finished all his homework, but he stabbed me. I'm okay. That's like every like parent, like one of those like student uh, conferences and stuff. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, he's doing so. He's, he's the best student in class, but he likes to talk and he threw a chair and he broke a window. And I'm like, that's great. That just wasn't even me. I wasn't even, that wasn't, it was not me, but no, nah, it's just, I, yeah, I hate it when teachers do that. I had one teacher, he did that to me. It was this computer teacher I had. And he was just like, oh yeah, he's the best. Like he, he uh, he's like oh, the, one of the, like the few students that he doesn't like look at the uh, keyboard when he's typing, he just types along and stuff. But he likes to laugh a lot. He likes to crack jokes. He's a class clown and all of that. My mom's looking at me, I'm trying to go. Cause at the time Battlefield 3 was coming out. And so I'm like, I'm trying to trade in like 50 something PlayStation 2 games to try to get uh, Battlefield 3 at GameStops. And I did, I got it, but I'm like, bruh, like, st stop, like, you are not helping. The, like, the whole, like, the whole reason to come here is to, like, tell us how good of a stem, like, you just, you might as well just call my mom. If they, it's like, that's the thing, they, they, they don't ever call your house when, when you are doing stuff. Like, they wait until a student-led conference or student conference, whatever they call it, and then that's when they decide to just tell everything. So I'm like, you teachers, man, get fired. That's, that's all I gotta say, get fired. Here's a bad day at work. On a field trip, a little girl stepped in dog dew and then wiped it off on the back of my pant leg. <laughs> wow. And I can't rub her nose in it, right? I can't do that. Wow. I gotta be professional. I gotta document it. I gotta talk to the girl's parents. I gotta push her down a flight of stairs. <laughs> you can't do that. You can pay another kid to do it. <laughs> yeah. I can do a lot of That's... stupid stuff like that as a kid. I get in trouble. I probably would have set up like some sort of game like, like, I don't know, I'm like, hey, let's just all play dodgeball. And then just immediately just looked at the little girl. I'm like, you're going down. I'm like, you, like, you're going to feel my wrath. Why would she even do something like that? I, there's some kids out there. They just, they have like a, like just a moment where they just lose their minds. Like they just seriously go insane. They don't even know what they're doing. I'm like that little girl. Yeah. She had got, like, the coldest. Like, I would have, like, did, like, a flip and then just so I could get, like, more just, like, just velocity on throwing my arm. I don't even know if velocity is the right word to use, but I definitely would have just threw, like, the coldest dodgeball at her. At the time, I used to fight all the time at recess, and I'm obviously a bitch, so I shouldn't have done that. that anybody in here fight? You guy in the army jacket? Did you ever fight at school? For sure, right? This? That means he's killed people before. <laughs> that means... He murdered somebody today on the way over here and he doesn't want me to talk about it. And I'm the next one who's gonna get murdered, obviously. Uh, but I was thinking about all my fights at school, all my childhood fights, and I remember that kids fight differently than adults. Like if I said something about your girl, you would just beat the crap out of me right now because we're men. But kids don't do that. Kids schedule the fight for later. Yes. You guys remember doing that stuff? <laughs> it was always like, hey Tim, you messed up, dude. I heard you told the whole class I liked Maria. Big mistake, bro. 4.30 at the bus stop. I'll see you there, dude. <laughs> and then you go and have all day of school together. This is a true story. I was supposed to fight Dave Ryan. We set it up for 4.30, okay? All day, everybody's like, oh shit, dude, 4.30, 4.30. Me and Dave get paired up together on a science project in class. Wow. <laughs> and we had to work together the whole period. I was like, I think number three is photosynthesis. He was like, are you sure, dude? I was like, yeah, it's definitely photosynthesis. He was like, wow, thanks, man. 4.30, bitch. <laughs> Love the kids are expensive, though, man. People put pressure on me. Financial pressure with my son. Are you saving up for his college yet? I haven't even paid for my college, man. Are you kidding me? 
I'm gonna have to walk him up through the financial aid line to the people I still know. <laughs> yeah, I got tab going, right? We're good. <laughs> yeah, no, turns out I am alive. <laughs> no. Cast of the Cradle song is gonna be totally different, you know. Boing, boing, my son went to college the other day, but I still have my own student loans to pay. Well, the checks in the mail and the bills are due. The interest on my loans continues to accrue. When you're catching up, that I don't know when, but we'll be filing Chapter Ten, yeah. the phone it occurred to me my boy makes more than me I swear he's only it. 23 and he's living in my house for free <laughs> still living at home is that what I'm guessing dude remember how much everything mattered in high school I was thinking about that. Remember how much everything mattered? Remember reading out loud? Mm. I rushed minds. There was one time a teacher, she told me to slow down. I'm like, I don't want to. And then there was another teacher, because I was like, I don't know. I read off stuff like if I was a basketball player. You know how like basketball players, they just have like no emotions. I just would be sitting there just all like, Sam say he didn't want no green eggs. Um, they got into a fight. Like one thing led to another. Somebody got shot, and I like. And then one teacher, she was all like, "Tyler, you gotta like read with pizzazz. Like you gotta be like, like Sam got shot, and then he, they, uh, a big explosion happened, and all these other. And I'm like, that's not me. And I'm like, that's not my like a big explosion happened. I'm like, and I did. I'm like, I don't they're like no. It's shout out to Miss Jensen, but I'm like, I just. I, I don't have pizzazz. I'm like, I'm not a pizzazz. I feel like now I do, but I'm like, when you put me in front of kids, I don't even know. Maybe if it's like friends of mine, I'm like, okay, I'm like, I have pizzazz because it's my, you know, it's, it's like, it's my friends and stuff. Like, I got to crack some jokes with them. I was like, I was in the classroom. Like, I think, no, I was reading to like kids. Yeah, I was reading to like some, I was an eighth grader reading to some sixth grade kids. I'm all like, these kids don't care about pizzazz. They care about Call of Duty. These kids don't care about me reading a book a certain way. So I'm like, I, yeah. I, I remember I chose the smallest. Um, I chose like the smallest book, read it as fastly as possible, but. Why the fuck did we have to do that? Yeah. That was the most embarrassing shit ever. Facts. Especially as a guy. Like, by the way, ladies, you didn't know this. In like 13 years old, first off, like we're getting hard for no reason. <laughs> All day, teachers would make you stand. Brent, can you please stand and not be hard and read the book, please? Wow. Can you put your pen? Can you tuck the penis and read Macbeth, please? <laughs> and our voices were changing. That was the worst shit ever to have to read while your voice is changing, where you're sitting up there like in 19. <clears throat> in 19. <clears throat> oh, fuck. <clears throat> in 19. Oh, Jesus. And then the worst is when the teacher would go, take your time. Don't cock block me for all of high school. You can't say that shit. <laughs> and your friends were assholes too. Guys' friends, they were assholes in class. They had no sympathy. The second you're like, in the 19, uh, you couldn't? Uh, they were like, hey, you can't read, you're an orphan. He's an orphan. You're a fucking orphan. Lori, he loves you. He never wanted to tell you that shit. Caught him jerking off to your yearbook photo when you played field hockey. That field hockey one from last year, you look great. But he jerked off to it. Wow. What? You did. <laughs> Fuck you, Brent. You sleeping over? Fuck you. Wow. It's the worst. And though, and those be like your best friends. Those are like, he probably, whoever that guy is, he's probably still friends with him till this day. If not, then yeah, he probably realized that, the, yeah, that guy, he's just can't be friends with somebody like that. He's going to set me up for failure every time. But nothing was worse than asking girls out. Asking girls out in high school was the worst thing in the world because guys, like I said, had no sympathy, but then you girls, if I got turned down, would go and tell everybody. Like the second I got turned down, you go to your friends like, oh my God, you won't believe he just asked me out. You know Brent Morning, you know the kid with like the big head and the whatever body? Dang. Anyway, yes. he comes up to me when I'm at, at my locker. He's sweating so much. I mean, covered in sweat. I'm like, what, did you just jog here? I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, he starts going on about how he wishes we had clowns for teachers and we should have a bear day. I, 
I had no fucking idea what he was talking about. I was 15 minutes late for class. Then out of nowhere, he turns bright red, can't even make eye contact, and he's like, um, I was just wondering if you wanted to go to the movies with me on Saturday. And I was like, no, I have a boyfriend. And he was like, me too, and just walked away. <laughs> Did you know he was gay? And I heard he can't read. <laughs> But I feel like kids today don't have to deal with that as much. Like, everything I'm reading, they're growing oh, up man. so fast. You know, like, they're getting blowjobs on the bus. Hey, you know what? Their kids is wild like that. There's the one, two kids at my school. They got caught, uh, you know, having sex in the library. In the library, out of all places. Like, the most quietest place in this, you, mm. I'm like, I just, I heard that. That was just all like, man. My school was kind of wild. It was, I like, I honestly, I'm like, I, I think I, I should, I should, I should just come out with a TV show and just like all, just all of the memories, just call up all my friends. I'm like, we got to just write down all the crazy things that happened at that school that we remember and stuff. Cause I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of crazy things that happened at that school. So what? Blow 7 a.m. blowjobs. <laughs> Nobody should be late for the bus if you're getting blown on the bus. Moms have to be like, Bailey, time for school? Got it, got it. French toast sticks. You got the French toast stick? Give me the French toast sticks. Elliot, wait! Give me the French toast. Mom, I'm gonna get blown! Give me the fucking French toast stick! Throw them! Throw them! Woo! Love school! They just go to the back of the bus like, Amanda! Amanda, back here! I'm back here! I'm getting blown! Seven! I'm so tired! <laughs> <laughs> Remember when buses didn't have shocks either and you just jumped, you're like, ho, ho, ho! Oh! <laughs> yeah, that was, man. I hate the fact that this is, yeah, this is a try not to laugh. Try not, I, I'm not doing no more try not to laugh challenges to this. Man, that was difficult. That was a hard try not to laugh challenge. I, man. That was that was difficult. That was good though. Shout out to Laugh Factory. Um, make sure yeah, make sure you guys go subscribe to them. That last guy who is I figure out who that last guy is because there is a few comedians that I follow and I was like um from previous videos that I had watched, but that was difficult, man. That was way too difficult. But anyways, yeah, make sure you guys go subscribe to Laugh Factory. Like, subscribe to me too, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching and peace.